I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're speaking with Dr. Daniel Brubaker, who is a distinguished scholar known for his insightful analysis of political behavior. His groundbreaking study, Psychosocial Political Dysfunction of the Republican Party, investigates the profound transformation of the party once associated with Abraham Lincoln. His exploration into neuropsychological development and crowd psychology provides a unique lens into the understanding of the contemporary Republican Party's apparent divergence from reality and propensity for fear mongering. We're delighted to have the doctor join us here today on Spotlight. We ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. Doctor, thank you so much for being our guest today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Let's first look at your book. Um, and it talks about the dysfunction of the Republican Party, the psychosocial political dysfunction of the Republican Party. What, what do you mean by that, sir? Well, psychosocial is uh, defined as an integrating uh, social factors along with individual uh, thoughts and behaviors which uh, is uh, really kind of describes the book. And if you look at the cover, uh, psycho stands for uh, psychological and social for sociological. And on the cover, I have a picture of the brain, which stands for psychological. And I have a picture of a group of people, which, which stands for sociological. And political dysfunction of the Republican Party, I have... Um, a GOP elephant turned upside down. So uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go into about 10 minutes or so about uh, uh, why I see the Republicans being dysfunctional today. Okay. So in my first chapter, I talk about fact versus fiction. And there's a lot of uh, disinformation that comes from the Republican Party. Uh, there's a lot of dishonesty. We've seen uh, President Trump lie probably thousands of times. So I, I dwell on um, uh, lying and uh, facts in the first chapter. Uh, there's a lot of disinformation, disinformation that comes out of uh, the media, uh, Fox Channel News from the uh, Republicans. Mm -hmm. And um, this information is defined as intentional uh, uh, production of uh, non-facts and uh, dis or, uh, and um, uh, false uh, information that goes to, comes out to the people. Uh, misinformation is unintentionally doing that, and malinformation is um, un or intentional. Uh, using false information and uh, lies and non-facts to hurt other people. And we see that happening in the Republican Party. Uh, the second thing that I see with the Republican Party is um, the behavior, the psychological behavior of the Republican Party. And what I've done is over 30 years, I've been observing the Republican Party and uh, I first, and my first analysis of it was that they were behaving like children and it's still continuing today. So um, going back to the 1990s when uh, Newt Gingrich was Speaker of the House, there was a shutdown of uh, uh, the government. And to me, that was basically having temper tantrums and, um, so the second chapter, I discuss uh, child behavior from two to two to uh, five year olds, and uh, one of the issues that comes up is uh, temper tantrums, and it uh, goes from um, two to four year olds, but it can go on to adulthood, and then it's uh, described as opposition defiant disorder, mm. and. With opposition to fight disorder, there's uh, things such as belligerence, a lot of anger, defiance, and we see that with members of the Republican Party. 
Um, if you want to see an example of that, uh, observe the behavior of Jim Jordan. It's pretty pretty standard. And even today, um, as of uh, the last weekend, there were a group of people, the committee of the Republican Party in uh, Michigan, that were having fist fights. And we saw we saw uh, fighting break out when they were voting for Kevin McCarthy. So this is really childish behavior. Um, and then what's happened in the past uh, seven years or so is what I have been observing as um, uh, personality disorders. And the ones that I see there are narcissism, paranoia, and antisocial personality disorders. So um, I broke down uh, antisocial personality disorders into sociopathy and, and psychopathy. And the um, diagnosis and statistical manual uh, by the uh, Psychiatric Association uh, simply just calls it that. But I decided to break it down into uh, sociopaths and psychopaths because there's a, kind of an abuse of those words or misuse of it. And I think it's important that it is broken down into two separate issues because it would benefit future research and also um, help out in terms of how to treat each one of them. Sociopaths, uh, I have like 10 different traits for each one of them, but basically sociopaths are a white criminal, a white collar criminals and sociopaths are um, serial killers. But you don't have to be killing people to still be a psychopath. Uh, we see things like Putin these days. He's not killing anybody personally, but he's having a lot of Ukrainians mm. killed. And um, so I, I broke that down, uh, and I think it's important. Uh, there's a lot of paranoia with uh, Republicans, and we've seen that even over the years from McCarthy to um Goldwater to Nixon, and it goes on today. Uh, there's a lot of fear mongering. So um, I present all of this in, in chapter three, and uh, the fear mongering uh, is really um, the type of thing where where the Republicans call Democrats names. This sort of started back with uh, Newt Gingrich in the '90s. He was calling Democrats, um, he was calling them communists, uh, jackasses, and um, uh, socialists. And they're really not socialists. So um, what I did in chapter four was I described socialism. And I went into a lot of detail into all the different types of socialism, from uh, radical socialism to uh, democratic socialism. Mm. And uh, I described all the different kinds. There's even Christian socialism, uh, things like um, my family, uh, which uh, I grew up as Anabaptist. And Anabaptist uh, started in Switzerland in the uh, 1500s with the Reformation. And they were considered radical uh, Christians because they, they disagreed with uh, infant baptism. Mm. So they were persecuted and uh, killed uh, because uh, the Catholics had infiltrated the government pretty much throughout Europe. So they had to flee to Germany and there they, um, I was considered a Protestant uh, country, but under the uh, 1600s, 30 year war, uh, it was the Catholics against the uh, Protestants. And I don't know if people uh, understand this or not, but there's been over 8 million people killed in the 30 year war. Hmm. So my family, my ancestors had to uh, flee to America in the early 1700s, and they bought property in the uh, 
Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, which is kind of the heartland for Amish, Mennonites, Church of the Brethren, and Quaker. And they are considered uh, Christian socialists because they uh, produce goods, they distribute goods and exchange goods, and they basically have their own government. And they really, they really don't uh, get involved with the federal government. They believe in a separation of church and state. And so that makes them social, uh, 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 Christian socialists. Mm -hmm. But I go into also um, the distinction between democratic socialism and uh, social democracy. So when the Republicans call Democrats socialists, it's really not true. What Democrats promote is really social democracy. And then I go into that in the uh, in chapter five. I go into uh, utilitarianism, which is uh, the greatest good for the greatest number of people. It's a moral philosophy that um, social democracy is following. So things like social security, uh, Medicare, and all those uh, uh, social things that the Democrats have promoted in the past are good things, so the greatest good for the greatest number of people. So then I came up with uh, uh, a counterpart to that that I call nefariousism, which is the greatest bad for the greatest number of people. Mm -hmm. And we see that with the Republican Party who wants to destroy things like Social Security and Medicare and other programs that are good for, for Americans. So uh, that I see as a big problem. And then... Uh, I also go into conservatism, which I think is a, also uh, a big issue. Um, conservatism is subject to change, innovation, and any progress. And people probably don't realize, but there's probably about 12 uh, factions of um, conservatism in the Republican Party. Uh, the Republican Party represents conservatism. There's uh, traditional conservatism, there's social conservatism, uh, fiscal, uh, neoconservatism, paleoconservatism, uh, 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 libertarian conservatism, national conservatism, and on and on. So how do we, um, as a Republican party, as Republicans, get anything done in Congress form any kind of policies if we have all this uh, distraction within the party. Mm. So I see that as a um, problem. Plus, you know, all the conservatism does is they don't believe in change. We have global warming. They don't want to do anything about that. They deny it. And this is an issue. The other uh, aspect that I see is fascism. And fascism is an authoritarian um, uh, far right nationalist ideology that uh, supports violence, hatred, and um, uh, opposition to um, the op or opposite. They try to control the opposition. So we see that happening uh, with Donald Trump, who wants to be a authoritarian. He wants to control uh, the deep state and get rid of a lot of good institutions. Uh, which is what fascism does. Uh, we also see with uh, Governor DeSantis, he wants to control. Um, he wants to control industry, um, businesses, uh, women's reproductive rights, uh, education, and uh, control the opposition, which he calls liberals and. Mm -hmm. That's the type of thing that uh, Mussolini and Hitler and Piaget out of uh, uh, Chile and Franco in in, um, in Spain have done, and they kill the opposition, thousands and thousands of people. Uh, in his recently he said in a, one of his speeches, he wants to uh, eliminate wokeism. Uh, Governor DeSantis doesn't know what woke really is because the definition in Merriam-Webster is uh, uh, social and racial justice. 
So a conservative uh, can have be woke based on that definition, but he uses it the wrong way to try to uh, fear monger all the Republicans against the Democrats who are more liberal. So he doesn't realize that uh, the Republicans were woke right from their inception because they believed in uh, racial justice. Therefore, the um, the Civil War. So I see all those things as a significant problem. And um, I just wanted to go through all that in some detail. But there's other issues as well. Absolutely. Do you make a distinction between GOP leaders and the voters who are members of the Republican Party? No, they're they're all together. I mean, uh, I I see this as a, a I think a mental health problem with the uh, Republicans. You know, I'm Republican for for 57 years, and uh, I voted Republican, but I also have uh, voted Democrat. But over these past uh, few years, uh, we have the this this following the the MAGAs that uh, go along with the. Uh, uh, with Donald Trump and all the negative and bad and uh, nefarious issues. Mm. Tell us a little bit about your background. So I'm a practicing physician. Uh, I've been um, I've been in medicine for about 47 years. I do um, uh, I, I'm still practicing. I uh, like I went through with my ancestry. Uh, that's to me has been important. Uh, part of the reason I wrote the book is um, uh, because I've been in academic medicine for thirty years, and academic medicine requires that uh, you do research, you obtain grants from uh, to support the research. You have to teach medical students, interns, residents, and nursing nurses and such. And you have to publish. I, um, I published uh, many uh, articles in uh, medical journals, peer-reviewed journals, and uh, uh, also a couple chapters in medical textbooks and so forth. And what I what I found about myself is I'm analytical and I'm a critical thinker. And I think that is being reflected in the book. Uh, I always wanted to write a novel, but uh, uh, I tried that a few years ago. It didn't work out because I, I don't have that type of uh, creativity. Mm -hmm. So the book is an educational book. It's something that I've been doing, you know, pretty much uh, all my life professionally. And um, and now I've been doing, for the past uh, 20 years, I've been doing medical legal work. And that's also using a lot of critical thinking. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so that kind of explains a little bit of my background. I've also, uh, the other reason I've, I'm writing the books is uh, I, I, I love nature and all my fun activities have been uh, in uh, the outdoors, I first started out cross-country skiing, then downhill skiing. Uh, I did a, a race in Western New York, a uh, cross-country ski race for 35 miles. Hmm. And out of 600, I came in 10th, so uh, I did pretty That's good. Great. And um, I did rock climbing, ice climbing. And ice climbing might, might go out the window uh, because of global warming. Uh, right. Ice climbing is is... Um, waterfalls that freeze over in the winter time, and then you climb them. And I, wow. I've done that for about twenty years. I, I uh, technically climbed the three highest mountains in North America: uh, McKinley, Rainier, and uh, Whitney. Uh, I also loved uh, mountain biking and um, uh, sea kayaking, and all those things uh, generated. A, a, a health problem. I've had six spine surgeries in the past 10 years, two in, in 2012, 2014, and two last year. So 
And that's pretty much knocked me out from doing all my fun activities. So now my fun activity is pretty sedentary writing books. And right. uh, so I wrote this book. I also am in the process of writing a second one called um, Grief, Forgiveness, Acceptance, and Rejection. Hmm. So that should be coming out probably next year. And then I'm kind of working on another one, which I won't get into right now. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you keep busy, sir, that's for sure. And your outdoor pursuits are fascinating. Um, let me ask you this. Do you feel the media as it has evolved since the creation of Fox News? It used to be CNN was kind of down the middle and everybody tried to be unbiased. But when Fox came along and took a side, it seems like everybody took a side. And there became a polarization at the same time of the American electorate. electorate. Do you feel that way too, that it's kind of the flames of hostility are kind of fanned by Fox News, MSNBC, or you name it? Uh, it is. And it's, you know, it's all about money, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, MSNBC is more on the liberals, Democratic side. Uh, Fox News is on the, I say, on the radical disinformation, far right side of things. CNN's kind of in the middle, but they seem to going seem to be going a little bit more to the right. Mm. And yes, that does create a polarization in in the U.S. I I, I really like to see more um, news like. Uh, National Public Radio, which is mm -hmm. something I uh, listen to quite a bit. Uh, left, right, and center that they have on Saturday nights is is fun to hear because they talk about the uh, conservative side and they also talk about the liberal side. And, you know, this is something I think the other channels should get into, but, you know, it's about uh, money and uh, that they're following. Yeah. And a lot of it, like you said, is all about money. If they throw red meat to the voters, they're going to get a lot of viewers. And uh, and that seems how it works. Before we leave you today, is there anything else you'd like the audience to know? Well, I, I'd like uh, I'd like them to know that uh, what I'm trying to do is I, I would like to see the Republican Party become more progressive. I set up a website that I call RepublicansNumber4Progress.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it has to move to the uh, more to the left uh, because we have to make progress. Uh, I've made progress in medicine and that's kind of my background. And it has to be done in the United States because we've got to compete with China. And the only, only way we can compete with China is to be progressive, innovative and such. The conservatists, they are you know, blocking, obstructing, and destroying uh, anything that's being done that's good for Americans, and it, it's got to change. Uh, I think, I you know, when I was um, doing book signing for the LA Times in, in Los Angeles, the kind of people that were coming up to look at my book and get my book and sign my book were uh, young people, mm -hmm. uh, Gen X, Y, and Z. So I have a lot of hope in those people, and I and they're they're the types of people that are reading the book. Magas aren't going to read it. Even Jellicos aren't going to read it. It's it's the future that's that's reading the book. Oh, that's who you want reading it. The future is in their hands. The name of the book is Psychosocial Political Dysfunction of the Republican Party. It is written by Dr. Daniel Brubaker. It is a very intriguing analysis of Republican leaders, Republican voters, why they act, why they behave as they do, which as the doctor has mentioned at times is dysfunctional, at times is even illegal as we saw on January 6th. Doctor, thank you so much for giving us our, your time here today on Spotlight. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been fun and pleasure. Pleasure's all mine, sir. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.